Greetings, everyone. Boy, we're coming into the home stretch for the old X-Fest here. Today we're going to be taking a look at Wolverine's second solo outing, plainly entitled The Wolverine. There you go. Also known as Logan Goes to Japan. Now this one is based primarily on the classic four-issue miniseries from 1982, by written by Chris Claremont and illustrated by Frank Miller, two legends of the comic book world. Now, I, I have to confess, it's one that I've been meaning to read forever, but still have not got around to doing so. I, I, I really need to get on that. There's, there's actually a lot of big, classic, notable X-Men stories that I still need to uh, really sit down and read. <sighs> Sadly, that is one of them. But apparently, that was the big, influential Wolverine story, the one that... Uh, made the character more what we know him as today, uh, established him as the modern-day Ronin, the samurai without a master, essentially. And uh, that's very much what he is and what he has been ever since. And that's what this movie's all about, that version of Logan that we haven't... We, we've kind of seen hints of in the movies thus far, but this is the one that really shows Wolverine from the comics pretty much bang on. So let's talk about it today on the Multimedia Chronicles. Welcome back. So, yeah, this is yet another one, uh, much like First Class, that I think I really underappreciated the first time I watched it. Um, I, I went into it in the wrong mindset. I was, I was expecting more of, uh, you know, a, a, a more action-heavy Wolverine story and really did not appreciate this for what it is. And what this is, I think, is far better than if it was just an action-oriented Wolverine story. Oh, you've got action in it. There's no question about that. you got... Wolverine versus Silver Samurai. You've got Wolverine versus a whole clan of ninjas, and uh, and you got Yukio. Holy crap! What an awesome supporting character who can really hold her own. She's got an absolutely spectacular sword fight uh, towards the end of the movie between her and her father. Actually, well, I guess her adopted father, but still, it's it's pretty vicious. Very high speed sword action and uh, just just amazing. Uh, please let us see more of Yukio. I adore her so. <laughs> so what we have here is uh, we start off with a flashback to the day that the bomb fell on Nagasaki. And Wolverine was in a prison camp, basically stuck in a, uh, a well with just a metal uh, top on it. The planes start to come in and the, the Japanese officers who are running, running the camp realize that this is bad, we gotta get out of here. So they let all the prisoners go, they let them all escape and just run for their lives, and then all of the officers kill themselves, except for one. One who is hesitant, he's about to kill himself to, you know, restore the honor and such. And then the bomb hits, and Wolverine calls to him from the pit and says, quick, get over here, you know, get over here, I can, I can protect you. So he saves his life. So he drags him down to the pit, puts a sh sheet metal over him, puts his body over it, because, of course, Wolverine can heal, and uh, and then the blast hits, and it just levels the whole city, levels the island, and this big just geyser of fire shoots into the well where they are. Wolverine takes the full force of it. Now, of course, in real life, even with his exemplary healing ability... Wolverine and the other guy would have been vaporized. I mean, it's just, even with his amazing healing ability, there's no way he actually would have been able to survive that. In fact, there was a question, that exact question was on uh, Quora, which is a great sort of question and answer site where people can answer, ask whatever question you want, and then people who are experts and, and whatnot will answer those questions and give you all kinds of interesting information. Well, one of the questions that came up there recently was, could Wolverine survive a nuclear blast? And the simple answer was no. <laughs> Maybe if he was far enough away from it, he could weather out the radiation effects. But he, if he was that close to the blast, I mean, they were on an island where they could see Nagasaki across the water. I mean, clear as day, they, they were pretty damn close to the epicenter. So 
even down in the the POW well, there's no way they would have survived. But this is movie slash comic book logic, and we can't be vaporizing our heroes in the opening scene, so we'll just take it as read that they lived. <laughs> so the other officer uh, sees Wolverine heal right before his very eyes, and they stay down there for a little while until kind of things calm down up there. Now, of course, then there would be the radiation, which would just be through the roof at that point. So they wait for, I don't know, a few hours, and then Wolverine's like, okay, let's go, it's safe. It's like, yeah, I'm sure it's really safe. <laughs> but for, for whatever reason, there was no mention of radiation poisoning or radiation burns or sickness or anything like that. We'll just kind of assume this is the, the James Bond Dr. No style of nuclear bomb, where it's just a really big bomb, and radiation doesn't even figure into the mix. So... <laughs> Yeah, anyway, uh, that's the flashback scene. So it sort of establishes that Wolverine saved this guy's life back in the day. So fast forward to the future. Uh, Wolverine is living out in the forest all by himself, and he, he's really uh, feeling bad due to the events of X3. Well, don't we all? <laughs> Yeah. And he's plagued by dreams slash nightmares of Jean Grey. And uh, he's kind of going a little bit crazy just from the isolation and whatnot. And he keeps seeing her in his dreams. And in the dream, they're together and they're happy. And it's wonderful. And she keeps saying, you should come and join me, you know, be with me. And such meaning, kill yourself so we can be together. You know, really nice. Um... And he, he's just really tormented and, and alone. And uh, there's a wonderful scene, actually, uh, in that part of the movie where he's just walking through the forest on his own and you see uh, claw marks on the trees, sort of slashed one way, slashed another way. And then he sees one tree that's just slashed one way. So he whips out his claws and he slashes it the other way. And at first you're thinking, like, oh, I guess, you know, Wolverine's marking his territory. But then as he's walking this huge grizzly bear appears and just kind of, like, acknowledges him. as like, hey, how's it going? And then uh, <laughs> they just kind of walk along, you know, keeping their distance but respecting each other's boundaries um, and not bothering each other. And they just kind of walk along. And you get the impression that, that they have a little bit of history, like they've met, they know each other, they're okay with each other being in, in the same territory. Um, so what I got out of that was that the the slashes on the thing were one was the bear and one is Wolverine, sort of like we're sharing this territory, uh, which I thought was just a nice little moment. And, and I think I was talking to Skinslip about this and we both agreed that that was like one of the most Wolverine comic like scenes thus far in the movies. Um, and, and I totally pictured it as one of those multi page scenes in a comic where there's no no dialogue no words no narration it's just letting the art speak for itself letting the the action speak for themselves and it really just it was just this really nice little moment in the movie that uh i just love i mean it was so just beautiful and peaceful and you know we have these two powerful animals we'll say wolverine and the this just gigantic grizzly bear um perfectly at peace in their environment and perfectly cool with each other and it's just a really really nice little moment i really like that a lot so what ends up happening is the uh the grizzly the, the he goes to town and does some stuff and then the grizzly bear gets shot by some hunters and um he he realizes that the uh, with a bow and arrow no less and he realizes that the bow and arrow was uh, actually poisoned which was illegal so he sadly puts the bear out of its misery because it's suffering and uh, and then goes into town, finds the hunters, and confronts them at a bar. And as he's confronting them, uh, he's met up with by Yukio and uh, a couple of her uh, associates. And they uh, basically say, you know, this is he, he's going to be <laughs> he's going to be dead in three days in that same truck out there. Because uh, apparently Yukio's mutant ability is she can foretell people's death. Yeah. And she says later in the movie, he says, I only ever know, you know, I can only ever see one thing about 
everybody I meet and that's how they're going to die. And she talks about how when she was five years old, she, you know, I guess in her case, her power manifested earlier. You, you often it only manifests at puberty, but in her case, it manifested earlier. Um, where she foretold the, or she foresaw the deaths of her parents. And she, uh, uh, basically in a car accident. And, and when she was five, she's sitting in the back of the car and recognizes it as this is, this is when it happens. Uh, gets into an accident, the, the parents are killed, she survives and becomes an orphan. Uh, and then we find out later that she was basically found wandering the streets and she was taken in by uh, this uh, Japanese family. Now, uh, the reason that she's tracking down Wolverine is because, remember the guy he saved way back at the end of World War II? Yeah, well, he's dying. He's an old man. He's dying now. Strangely, not of radiation poisoning, but okay. And then... <laughs> Uh, he basically wants to meet with Wolverine one last time, thank him for saving his life, and Wolverine assumes, say goodbye, because he's on his deathbed. So he flies all the way out to Japan to meet up with him, and, you know, he thanks him for saving his life and everything, and then they get to having a conversation, and Wolverine realizes he's not there to say goodbye. He's there because he's met up with this other mutant chick, this stunning hot blonde who is really good with uh, venom and poisons and stuff like that. And her mutant ability is partly the immunity to all poisons. And she's kind of like a snake. Yeah, when she dies, she just sheds her skin and comes back to life. Kind of, kind of creepy. But uh, what the old man wants is Wolverine's healing ability. He wants his healing ability to be young again and to continue living. Does he sees Wolverine, he's like, wow, you, you look exactly the same as you did, you know, 60, 70 years ago. And, um, and, and he's just blown away by it. But apparently he's been obsessed with mutants and, and the, the healing factor and stuff like that. And this, uh, the, this scientist snake venom viper lady uh, apparently has figured out a way to extract Logan's healing factor and put it into the other guy and the only catch is it won't like copy it it will remove it from logan so logan would then die of old age he would age normally he wouldn't have his healing factor anymore and and there we go and that whole thing is basically just the setup for it so needless to say logan says uh no uh immortality isn't what it's cracked up to be trust me i'm doing you a favor by not giving it to you so he leaves he has what he thinks is another dream with gene gray but it's not. It's actually the Viper Lady kind of encroaching on his 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 dream state, and then uh, she poisons him. And the next thing he knows, he discovers. Well, <laughs> he discovers after getting shot a few times that his healing power is gone. It, it's just gone. So we're left to wonder, like, well, did did they like just forcibly take it from him? Uh, supposedly, the old man dies. And then we don't know what, you know, what's going on. I mean, you, you know, I mean, it's it's not really a big spoiler to say, you know, that he's probably not really dead because that just seemed too convenient. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, common sense clearly dictates. But, um, yeah, so anyway, I'm, I'm giving you the whole freaking summary of the plot here. Anyway, long and short of it is, is a long stretch where he has, doesn't have his healing ability. He still has his adamantium claws and his adamantium skeleton, obviously. So he's still got his, you know, physical abilities. He just doesn't have the healing factor. So, and, and of course, he keeps getting shot. People keep shooting him. It's like not just, not just cutting him or anything. They keep shooting him. Um, yeah, so then anyway, as it, as it unfolds, there's this big plot where uh, the, the dude is dying and he's going to leave his company to his son but realizes his son's a bit of a fuck up so he's going to give it to his daughter his son's daughter instead and then uh and then the 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 son doesn't like that thinks it's a pile of crap so he orchestrates this big plan to kidnap and kill the daughter logan gets involved and it's just this big whole thing going on and uh meanwhile logan's trying to figure out where his healing power went can he get it back what's going on um you know, you got the viper chick going around poisoning people. You got this other guy who's kind of tracking them and protect seems to be protecting Logan, protecting the girl who's apparently the head of this 
just kick-ass clan of ninjas that actually work for the uh, the old man. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway. Wow. <laughs> um, a lot of fun, I gotta say. I mean, it's, it, it's definitely got... It's very tonally different from the other X-Men movies we've seen before. But a few things I really liked about it. It's just so well-balanced. Especially when you contrast it to the other Wolverine movie. Like, the other Wolverine movie, one of the big problems it had was just too many damn characters in it. Um, now, I talked about that at, at considerable length, about how I enjoyed a lot of the, you know, appearances of those characters. They gave them their sort of moment in the spotlight. But I just felt like they were kind of shoehorned in just to have them in there, and there wasn't really any need to have them in there. Um, and it took away from the focus on Logan and Victor's story. But this one, this one, you've got a couple of characters, new characters. You know, you got Yukio, who's just kind of his, his guide slash support. She calls herself his bodyguard, especially while his healing factor is down. Um, you got Mariko, which is the, the daughter. And you've got, um, I don't remember all the characters' names. you got the ninja guy. you got the old man. you got Silver Samurai, which is basically just this massive uh, armor suit with... Uh, made out of adamantium, uh, so we have uh, and we got Wolverine without his healing power. But uh, well, I guess that isn't a character. But anyway, you know what I mean. There's there's not that many characters in it. I mean, and the ones that are in it get appropriate amounts of time in the spotlight without overshadowing or taking away from the main story. Um, again, also the action sequences. Uh, I talked about this in X Men First Class, how the the action sequences in this go on just long enough. They no, At no point do they feel drawn out or dragged out or anything like that. They're just right. You know, they, they, they build up. They, they have their, their big exciting moments. So you get the, the hero succeeding, the hero failing, and then, you know, wh whether it's the hero succeeds or fails action scene, it ends where it should and when it should. And you never once feel that it's drawn out or, or too much or... Or too little and unsatisfying. It's just right, um, and the moments of the quiet character moments versus the you know building the plot and and layering things on moments, again very well balanced. You know, I mean, we just get a perfect balance between character and plot and action. And again, much like first class, even the third act, the third act. You know, you've got your obligatory big fight. Wolverine finally gets his he healing power back, figures out what, what it was that was doing it, and, and basically fixes himself. It's during that scene we get that fantastic sword play with uh, Yukio and her, her dad there. Just a fantastic sword fight scene. Um, if you're a fan of you know old samurai movies like I am, then you, watch this. It, it has the feel of an old samurai movie, but it's got Wolverine in it. You know, but it, it very much feels... You know what actually it, it put me in mind of was... Um, where is it here? Let me just grab it. It actually put me very much in mind of Shogun. I mean, look, look even the covers. The covers even almost go together, like, you know. But, because uh, in Shogun we have, uh, you know, a man from Western civilization coming and uh, living in Japan and learning the ways of the samurai and whatnot... Uh, a, a lot of aspects of this are, are very similar to aspects of this. I mean, it's a classic story anyway. You know, a uh, guy from outsider comes into a particular culture and goes native, essentially. I mean, we've, we've seen that in a number of forms before. I mean, we've seen it in Shogun. We've seen it in Dances with Wolves. We've seen it in Avatar. But, um, yeah, so Wolverine kind of takes that, that concept in an X-Men-y direction. But, uh, but at the same time, I mean, it, it, uh, what, what it does is it, is it shows Wolverine as, uh, as I mentioned in the intro, as the samurai without a master. I mean, he very much has the same values as a samurai. He's about, you know, honor and justice and, and righting wrongs and maybe a little bit of revenge sometimes, but uh, only where, where appropriate. Uh, but I mean, uh, I'm, well, actually not even revenge. It's more just justice. It's like you have wronged this person, therefore you must die. You know, that's that's not revenge. That's not vengeance. That's justice. You know, justice has been served. Um, 
And boy, the bad guys sure get their just desserts in this. <laughs> Justice is definitely served throughout. But um, but yeah, same kind of vibe to it as uh, as Shogun. So again, you know, if you like samurai movies, you'll probably like this. If you like this, you'll probably like samurai movies because it's got the same kind of vibe to it. Um, pretty much anything by Akira Kurosawa. A lot of his stories, his movies are about masterless samurai, you know, ronins who are wandering the countryside, uh, you know, seeking justice and whatnot and just helping those in need. Um, that's very much the type of story that the Wolverine is. And I really dig those types of stories and I really like Wolverine as a character. So, I mean, this, this is perfect. I mean, it's just right up my alley. That's what I like to see. Um, but the thing I like about this, uh, just generally, is that it's not a big action-heavy X-Men movie. You know, it's kind of where I was going with that. But um, it, it's much more focused on the character. I mean, you get a lot of really deep uh, moments where we see Logan's torment. Uh, torment about having had to kill Gene back in Arc 3. And, uh, you know, the thing is, even though X3 itself was executed terribly, I really like how we have the story of Logan dealing with the emotional consequences of those events. I mean, even if you hadn't seen X3, it doesn't matter. It, you know, you can walk into this and watch this and get all the information you need. He had to kill the woman he loved. That's all that matters. That's all you need to know. That is the source of his torment. You know, he feels that he, he feels lost in the beginning of the movie. And, and the, over the course of the events of the movie, he learns more about himself and, you know, is able to pinpoint his, his torment and realize that he's beating himself up over nothing. Uh, but they leave it wonderfully open ended as well. I mean, after the, you know, everything has been done and the bad guys have been defeated, he's on a plane and we don't even know where he's headed. He doesn't even know where he's headed. But you really get the feeling that he's heading into a fresh start, a new beginning, and is going to be a better, you know, more balanced person as a result of it. I mean, he's, he went to Japan reluctantly, but found what he needed without even knowing it was something he was looking for. You know, I think that's a good way of putting it. So, yeah, the Wolverine. Freaking awesome. Love it can't wait for the new Wolverine movie that they're working on. Uh, the, the big popular rumor is that they're going to be adapting Old Man Logan, which is another big notable Wolverine story I really need to read. I was actually flipping through the graphic novel today just out of curiosity, and uh, damn, it looks good. Uh, it's basically one that takes place in the future where Logan is considerably older. Uh, it's kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, story, uh, but in a different way than uh, Days of Future Past. So be interesting to see if they do that and, and also i mean setting it sufficiently far in the future that we can still have present day wolverine stories in the middle if hugh jackman does decide to return to the role um apparently he's gone back and forth a little bit they're saying that he's saying that the, the wolverine 3 will be the last one he does as wolverine but then he's also said well you know, maybe maybe it'll be the last one <laughs> Um, cause I mean, he's gone, I mean, pe fans kind of joke, like, wow, he must be so sick of playing Wolverine. And it's like, well, if he was sick of playing Wolverine, would he have done it for 10 movies? No, I don't think so. I mean, he clearly has a genuine love for the character. And he's talked about that in interviews countless times before, how there's like certain iconic things he wanted, like from the comics that he wanted to do, like Wolverine's berserker rage, Wolverine's more sensitive side and things like that. And all the movies have given him a chance to explore different aspects of that, um, as an actor. But he genuinely loves the character. And I mean, let's face it, it's the, it's playing Wolverine that made him the huge star that he is today. I mean, prior to the first X-Men movie, he was primarily a stage actor. I mean, I think he'd done a little bit of film work, but nothing anybody had heard of at the time. X-Men put him in the spotlight, and suddenly he's everywhere. And good, because he's a freaking awesome actor. And, uh, and I've always just adored him as Wolverine. Um... Yeah, I mean, it was one of the interviews, I think it was for X-Men Origins, where they were talking about how, uh, you know, just how dedicated he is to playing the character of Wolverine right. Uh, so not only when, when he's, you know, doing an X-Men movie, is he constantly working out and eating protein, you know, in, uh, like protein shakes and whatnot, and keeping himself fit and toned and, you know, ripped. Um, 
But they say, like, boy, he, he's so dedicated. I forget who it was who said this one, one, in one of the interviews. They say he's so dedicated to that character that if he could make himself three inches shorter, he would. You know? Because <laughs> he knows. He knows that he's taller than the Wolverine in the comics. Everybody knows that. But other than that, it's like, does he nail the character? Absolutely, 100%, yes. Which is why I'm baffled when I see comic book fans complaining about his performance as Wolverine. I mean, really? What what the fuck are you complaining about? How, how much m more accurate does it need to be? Uh, is it really the only valid criticism you could possibly have for his portrayal of Wolverine is his height. And that's something that even he says is wrong. So... But whatever, who cares? It, this, you know, I mean, Trask in the comics was not a dwarf, yet he is in Days of Future Past. And you know what? Nobody cared, because Peter Dinklage is an amazing fucking actor. It's the same thing with Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. He's an amazing fucking actor. So, who cares if he's a few inches taller than the Wolverine in the comics? Really? Sorry, I just, I see that complaint a lot, and it needed to be addressed in some way. So there you go, little mini rant for you. <sighs> so yeah, anyway, uh, in case you're wondering, by the way, I should have mentioned this off the top, which cut I watched, the unrated extended cut. It's actually the only version I've watched, and as far as I'm concerned, the only version I will ever watch. Uh, now, I made a mistake back when I uh, originally did the Blu-ray update where I first picked this up. I thought you could get the extended cut in multiple editions. Apparently, you can't. You can only get the extended cut in this specific edition. The Blu-ray 3D edition. And that's it. So, sorry. I, I made a mistake. Please forgive me. <laughs> I think it was corrected in the comments by multiple people anyway. But uh, that said, I mean, I see this edition going cheap all over the freaking place at the time of this recording. So... Um, you should be able to find it pretty pretty easily, um, and definitely get the get the extended edition. It's the unleashed extended edition, and because uh, you know it, it it lets Wolverine cuss a little bit more, and the violence is a little bit more violent. So there you go. I think there's about a nine minute difference actually between the theatrical and extended version. So that's that's not insignificant. I don't know specifically what the changes are because I never watched the theatrical version. Um, only the theatrical version is in 3D, by the way, in case you were wondering. But, uh, but yeah, I like me some samurai action, and I like me some Wolverine. So give me both of them in a movie, and I'm all over it, man. Awesome. Alrighty, well, I guess next time will be the epic conclusion of the X-Fest. Yes, you might be saying, but, 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 but Sean, what about X-Men Apocalypse? Are you not going to talk about Apocalypse? No. No, I'm not. Well, I will eventually, but I, I'm I'm the wait for it to come out on Blu-ray guy, so I, I'm not going to see it in the theaters. So, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it later when it comes out on Blu-ray, and I, and I pick that up. So, I will talk about it eventually, and we'll have a whole entire one-episode X-Fest. Alrighty, that is it from me to you for now. So, quick thank you to my Patreon sponsors, especially Get Your Gorgeous On and Kyle Pellegree. Thank you very much, guys, for the ongoing support. Really appreciate it. Um, every dollar goes right back into the show and uh, just helps me do more of this stuff for you. And, uh, yeah. So we'll see you next time. Until then, thanks for watching and sayonara. <laughs>